Lesson 12.4 is mathematical induction. I would pause the video and write down these notes. So mathematical induction is a type of proof and the principle of it is that we suppose there's two conditions and if both of them are satisfied then the statement that we're trying to prove is true about all natural numbers so one two three so on and so forth so first thing we do is we prove that the statement is true for n equals one so we prove that it's true for one then we assume that it's true for some natural number n so we proved it's true for one we're going to assume it's true from two up to n then we prove it's true for n plus 1. If both of these conditions hold, then the statement is true for all natural numbers. And the reason this works is that n is general, so if we've proved it for 1 and we assume it for n, n could be anything, it could be 1, then we've proved it for 2 if we prove it for n plus 1, so on and so forth. So if the two conditions hold, then the proof is complete. So for this first proof, we want to prove that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus so on and so forth plus 2n minus 1 is equal to n squared. So the first thing we do is we want to prove that it's true for n equals 1. So we need to plug in 1 into both sides of our proof and prove that they are equivalent to each other. So if we plug in 1 to the left side, we're going to have 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 2 minus 1, which is 1. And if we plug in 1 to the right side, we're going to get 1 squared. And 1 squared is also equivalent to 1, so therefore we've proved it true for n equals 1. Next, we're going to assume that this statement is true for some k. Uh, you can use n. It doesn't really matter. A lot of textbooks will switch letters so that you're proving it's true for basically a different number. You're keeping it general. So. We're assuming that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus so on and so forth plus 2k minus 1 is equal to k squared for some k included in the natural numbers. This means k included in the natural numbers. So now we want to prove that it's true for n plus 1 or k plus 1. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to prove that this thing, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus so on and so forth plus 2k minus 1, plus the k plus 1th term, so plus 2 times the quantity k plus 1, I replaced k with k plus 1, minus 1 is equal to, if I replace the k on this side, k plus 1 quantity squared. So now we want to prove that these two things are equivalent to each other. Now here's where the assumption part comes into play. So we assumed that this thing is true. So if that is true, that means that that and what we have here in our second part of our proof are equivalent to each other. So we can replace the right left side here with k squared because we already said that those things were equivalent. So I'm going to replace the entire thing 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus so on and so forth plus up to just the 2k minus 1 because that's what we assumed up here. I'm going to replace that whole thing with what we said they're equivalent to so I'm going to replace it with k squared. Now I have this thing, k squared plus 2 times the quantity k plus 1 minus 1, and I want to prove that that simplifies to k plus 1 quantity squared. So doing some algebra, I just foiled this together, so you end up with k squared plus 2k plus 2 minus 1. Simplify that, you get k squared plus 2k plus 1, which if you factor this, factors into k plus 1 quantity squared, which is what we wanted to prove. So we proved that it was true for 1, and then we assumed it was true for some up to k, and then we proved it was true for k plus 1. So then our last statement is saying, okay, since we proved it's true for 1, and we proved it's true for k plus 1, therefore it must be true for all n in the natural numbers. So this little three-dot triangle means therefore, and then this upside-down a means for all. So we proved it's true for 1, we assumed it's true for up to k, we proved it's true for k plus 1, since k can technically be anything, we've now proved it's true for all natural numbers. For this next one, we want to prove that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus so on and so forth up to n is equivalent to n times n plus 1 over 2. So first thing is proving it's true for n equals 1. So go ahead and pause the video and prove it's true for n equals 1. So on the left side, if I plug in 1 for n, I just get 1. On the right side, if we plug in 1 for n, we get 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2. Well, that's 2 over 2, basically, and that cancels down to 1. So therefore, we've proved it's true for n equals 1. 
Next, we need to make our assumption statement. So we're going to assume that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus so on and so forth plus k is equivalent to k times k plus 1 over 2, so for some k in the natural numbers. And now we need to prove it's true for n plus 1. So for k plus 1, we want to prove that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus blah 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 plus k plus k plus 1 is equal to k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 all over 2. So I just replaced every n with a k plus 1. So now go ahead and pause the video and try to prove this statement true. So the first thing I did is I replaced the 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus blah 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 plus k with what we assume to be true, so the k times k plus 1 over 2. And then we still have the plus k plus 1. So then I knew that I had this kind of k plus 1 pulled out here. So what I did is I factored out the 1 half, because both of them share it, and the k plus 1. So when I factor out a 1 half k plus 1 out of the first term, I'm just left with a k. If I factor out a 1 half k plus 1 out of the second term, I'm left with 1, but then if I also factor out the 1 half, it becomes a 2. So I factored out, again, a 1 half k plus 1, so that's where the 1 half k plus 1 comes from. You're left with a k and a plus 2. So then I just rewrote it to match what I wanted to look like. I made the over 2 all in the denominator. I pulled the k plus 1 out in front, and then I made k plus 2 be k plus 1 plus 1. So therefore, we have proved this statement true for k plus 1. So then your last statement makes you actually answer the question. Therefore, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to n equals n plus 1. n times n plus 1 over 2 is true for all n in the natural numbers. Next proof. Prove that 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared plus blah 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 plus 3 to the n minus 1 is equal to 1 half times 3 to the n minus 1. So go ahead and pause the video and try this one. So step one, prove it's true for n equals 1. So I plugged in 1 and for n on the left side, and you get 3 to the 1 minus 1, which is 3 to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. On the right side, plug in 1 for n. You get 1 half times the quantity 3 to the first minus 1. Well, that would be 3 minus 1, which is 2. 2 times 1 half is also 1. So it's been proved for n equals 1. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and continue this proof. So next step, assume that it's true for some k. So 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared plus blah, 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 plus 3 to the k minus 1 is equal to 1 half 3 to the k minus 1. And now for k plus 1, we want to prove 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared plus blah, 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 plus 3 to the k minus 1 plus 3 to the k plus 1 minus 1 is equal to 1 half 3 to the k plus 1 minus 1. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and finish out this proof. So we want to prove it's true for k plus 1. So I took the part that we already assumed to be true, and I replaced it with the left side, 1 half times the quantity 3k, 3 to the k minus 1, plus I just simplified k plus 1 minus 1 to 3 to the k. Then I see that on the right side I still have a 1 half factored out, so I decided to factor out a 1 half out of the 3 to the k as well. So the first part just stays the same, 1 half times 3 to the k minus 1. If I factor a 1 half out of 3 to the k, it becomes 2 times 3 to the k. So now I have 1 times 3 to the k plus 2 times 3 to the k. That becomes 3 times 3 to the k. And then if I use my exponent rules, if I multiply two things with the same bases, I can add the exponents, and there's an invisible first power on this 3. So this part here ends up being 3 to the k plus 1. So we end up with 1 half times 3 to the k plus 1 minus 1, which is exactly what we want to prove. So then last step, just answer the question. Therefore, 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared plus blah, 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 plus 3 to the n minus 1 is equal to 1 half times the quantity 3 to the n minus 1 for all n in the natural numbers. For this next one, it's a little bit different the way they set it up. It says that prove that n cubed plus 2n is divisible by 3. So the way that I'm going to kind of set it up is to say that it's divisible by 3 is the same thing as saying that you can multiply 3 times some integer and get n cubed plus 2n. So the way I'm going to set it up is that I want to prove that n cubed plus 2n is equal to 3l, where l is some integer. l is included in the set of integers. Um, so l is not n, it's not the same thing, 
but you just want to prove that whatever you get out of here is equal to 3 times something. So go ahead and pause the video and use induction to prove this. So first, I proved it's true for n equals 1. I plugged in 1 to the left side. I got 1 cubed plus 2 times 1, which is 3, which is 3 times an integer. Now I'm going to assume that it's true that k cubed plus 2k equals 3l for some k in the natural numbers. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and prove it's true for k plus 1. This one works a little bit differently than the other ones do because there's aren't, there aren't two sides to your proof, really. So what I did is that we want to prove that k plus 1 quantity cubed plus 2 times k plus 1 is equal to 3m. I just changed the letter so it's not the same letter as right here, where m is an integer. So we want to get to a place where we can replace our k cubed plus 2k with 3 times l, so we can use this assumption statement here. So I just foiled everything out and distributed up here. So when you foil out k plus 1 quantity cubed, you get k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1. And then I distributed the 2, so plus 2k plus 2. So then I saw I had a k cubed plus a 2k, so I grouped those two together and then just simplified and left everything else on the side. And so now I have this k cubed plus 2k. Well, I assume that that thing is equal to 3L. I assume that thing that is a divisible by 3. So I replaced k cubed plus 2k with 3L from our assumption statement. And now I notice that all of my terms have a 3 in them. So I factored out a 3 out of everything. And so you get 3 times L plus k squared plus k plus 1. Well, L is an integer, and k is a natural number, which means it's also an integer, which makes k squared an integer, and 1 is an integer. So that means that because both of these are integers, this whole thing, L plus k squared plus k plus 1, is also an integer. So I just relabeled this thing M, so therefore we have our original thing that we wanted, k plus 1 quantity cubed plus 2 times the quantity k plus 1, equal to 3 times an integer, which I just called m, so therefore we have proved it for k plus 1, which means, therefore, n cubed plus 2n is divisible by 3 for all n in the natural numbers. So this has been proof by induction. You prove it's true for n equals 1, you assume it's true for some n in the natural numbers, and then prove it's true for n plus 1, and if you can fulfill both of those conditions, then you've proved it true for all n in the natural numbers.